there are human rights that we are all entitled to from birth until death. Would it surprise you to learn that many people are denied these rights? It surprised me. Becoming a member and part of volunteer staff of Women in Exile Initiative is a privilege that has allowed me to see, understand, and witness many concerns surrounding human rights, especially the denial of those rights to the women living in exile, those whom we call refugees. It is this uncomfortable truth that has made me seek the discomfort of standing in front of you because I believe that this platform can bring awareness. And awareness is the first step to creating the change needed to end double discrimination against refugee women. I would like to introduce you to some of the women I work with, but for many, protecting the identity is vital to their, to their security. Still, I will show you a picture of what the discrimination that the refugee women face looks like on a daily basis. What do you notice about these images? Yes, they're all coffee. In this regard, they're all the same. The coffee is brought into this country from different countries around the world. So they're all imports. In this regard, again, they are the same. Although they're all coffee, there can be some differences. Let's assume some have milk or cream, sugar or sweetener, and some do not. If I ask you to decide which cup of coffee will you keep and which should you discard, how will you decide? It will be a matter of preference, won't it? Preference is fine as a basis for deciding which cup of, cof of coffee should be kept and which one should be discarded. It is a terrible basis for deciding which person, refugee person especially, has the right to have the basic human rights and who does not. For many refugees in Germany, decisions about their where, how, and in the end, even if allowed to, to stay, are based on decisions and preferences. Sometimes it is an individual preference of a social worker or, or a refugee camp director with racist beliefs. Sometimes it is a judge who acts on the laws that discriminate the refugee coming from economized country and give preference to the other refugee coming from a better country. Having two women as an example of Ivy and Hima, Ivy coming from Cameroon and Hima from Syria. During the past two years, Ivy has lived in a single room with three other women. She has visited the camp, uh, camp director eight or 10 times, asking to be moved into another room, at least with more space. Every time her request is denied. Hima, coming from Syria at the same time, spent only two months in an overcrowded room after she asked the same camp director to be moved, she was moved to another room with only one roommate. Her request was approved immediately.
Ivy and Hima are both women, refugees, and both are in need of an appropriate space to live in. They're treated differently. Often the discrimination is based on skin color, but religion and sexual orientation also play a role to this, um, to this treatment, this unfair treatment. The line between discrimination, racism, and sexism is most blurred and overlapping. Sometimes the unfair and unequitable treatment stems from individuals or one part of refugee process. And sometimes it stems from the very core of our system itself with biased and discriminatory laws. Imagine fleeing from your country because it is one of the 73 countries in the world in which homosexu homosexuality is banned by law. You are a crime. <laughs> your life is threatened by your, by your society and even by your family and relatives. A threat which is very serious that could lead to, de to a death sentence. A death sentence which could also be either by stoning in the streets or court ruling. Eventually, you manage to flee to Germany, a country whose parliament voted to legalize same-sex marriage in June 2017, a country in which you know you'll be safe. At the end, you can enjoy being free of fear and just enjoy being yourself. Your relief is short uh, is short lived when you're called in for the interview which all asylum seekers must pass through. You're surprised at some of the questions you are asked during your interview, but if this is the path to saving your life, you're ready to answer any question. Imagine your pain when you hear that your asylum has been rejected and your shock and your shock to know why. Your asylum has been rejected because you cannot prove that you're a lesbian. You wonder if the other asylum seekers are also being asked to prove if they're straight or not. After all, even though the cases might be different, you seek the same thing, a safe place to live, refuge. We need an end to policies and practices aimed at making life here hard and emotionally draining to the refugee women as possible, such as overcrowding rooming and uh, humiliating conditions. These women have no privacy in the accommodation homes where anyone, whether it's a social worker, or security man, or even a refugee man can enter into their homes at any single time of the hour and of the day. This, among other things, contribute to the risk of sexual assaults and exploitation of the women and their children. The act of benefits for asylum seekers was passed in 1993 with the aim of discouraging 
asylum seekers coming to and or staying in Germany. It is discriminating because in this, in this act, treatment is only paid for in the event of acute disease or pain. Any further treatment, one has to individually apply at the social service centers. This means that the people making decisions who are unqualified make decisions concerning health on the refugees. Most women refugees health cases are treated in a, uh, by radical and drastic measures such as surgeries, which leaves the women lacking no time and possibilities to decide on, on what treatment on their own. We need clear policies on how to protect refugee women, especially from violence, especially from sexual violence, sexual harassment, and any other violence. I know what many of you are thinking. How can, how can these women be helped? Because it's true, these women's voices should be heard. I will quote, I'll, I'll share with you a quote from one of the women uh, who's a refugee and activist who has had this question many times as we have. How can I help? She replied, how can we know what your solidarity looks like? You know your resources, your power and abilities. So think about that and join and see how you can join in solidarity. Let us all with open minds See how we can join in solidarity with the thousands of women refugees in this country. Let us reflect on our own privileges and prejudices and look into our environment and change it. Let us break the isolation and listen to their stories. Let us donate what we can because solidarity needs time, energy, power, and money. We can dismantle racism, discrimination, sexism, when we see the un uncomfortable truth, when we decide to use our resources, abilities, and power, and when we unite in the discomfort of taking action to uphold the basic human rights of which a refugee is, woman is entitled to, same as you and I. <laughs>